Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. This is actually my very first episode back since I had my baby. So if I'm a little rusty today, you are going to have to forgive me. I got you guys a special guest for my comeback episode. But before I introduce her, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Adam and Eve. If you go to adameve.com and use my code Holly, you get 10 free gifts plus free shipping. That's adameve.com. Use code Holly for 10 free gifts with your purchase plus free shipping. So today, as I mentioned, I have a very special treat. I have a fantastic model who has also branched out into the music world. She's an incredible artist. She's an incredible human being. She is Raylan Joy, aka Madam Skin Diamond. Raylan, how are you doing? I'm fabulous. How are you? I am great. I am great. It feels wonderful to be back. I, um, as I mentioned before, might be a little bit slow. I haven't been sleeping all that well lately for some strange reason. So apologies beforehand if, um, I don't know, the conversation is not as fluid as it normally is, but I feel like you're going to make up for all of my um, shortcomings because you're such a fun person to talk to. Uh, don't worry about it. I'm just so happy for you and excited for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. People who watch my podcast will probably notice like, cause I always shoot from the same area, you know, ever since we've been doing quarantine and all of a sudden there's like this random like baby swing in the background that wasn't there last time. And uh, my boobs are even bigger than they were before. So that's fun, but let's uh, enough about me. How are you? So you can talk about your boobs. <laughs> My boobs are huge. That's that's all I really need to say. Um, so you are a fetish model, um, adult performer, and musician. Um, are there any other accolades that we should add to all of those things? Or what are you um, doing these days? Well, these days uh, I started formally training as a dominatrix a couple of years ago. Uh, that's been a very amazing like experience on a deep soul level for me because I felt like I was coming into my next stage of, you know, my next step of life. Like I love what I do and learning the ropes, so to speak, has been really beautiful. I love being able to control someone with something so simple. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's been amazing. I've also been working on a lot of music as well, though. Um, I've had continuous projects running in the background. This year was supposed to be the year of my first shows, but we all know what happened there. <laughs> I feel like this year for everybody was like a year that they were going to start. I was going to start doing my live shows, my live podcast shows this year. Um, yeah, I feel like so many people at the beginning of the year were like, 2020 is going to be my year. This is the year that I'm embarking on this, this, and this. And then the whole world just ground to a halt. So yeah, I know. Yeah, it's I know what you mean. been a humbling experience for us all, but I, I feel truly blessed. I mean, I've been quarantined with my partner, Dieter Compt, who's an artist, photographer, amazing visionary. And so we've been able to create at home together. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of, a lot of stuff that we've been able to get up to this year. Just not what was planned. <laughs> that's, but that's yeah, so it's, it's fun. fun. I was gonna say, it's so fun to have a partner that you can artistically collaborate with as well as obviously you know, just be in a relationship with because, um, my husband's awesome and I feel really fortunate to be quarantined with him, but you know, he's not somebody that I can like work on projects with really. Yeah. So, so that, so what kind of stuff have you and your partner been doing? Like anything in particular that people should be looking for? Well, we started an OnlyFans this year, so we've basically been shooting for that. Uh, we've been collaborating with Riley Reed a lot recently, which has been really fun. 
Um, we have some, we're sitting on some gold right now. I can't share it yet because there's some stuff going on, but it's really exciting. So, and it's been really nice to like kind of reconnect with people because when I left the industry about five years ago, I kind of, it was kind of abrupt in that I knew that I just needed to do something completely different. Like I had to refine myself, you know, and I did that through music. Um, and oh wait, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's just been, it's, it, it's, it's been such a journey that I feel like a completely different person now, you know, like music taught me so much like about myself and, you know, I was doing like some, you know, some deep soul searching at the time and going on that roller coaster of life and um, came out feeling really fucking good. And like, I feel more myself than ever before. And I know who I am and I want to fucking share that in every way possible. So it's, it's been cool. Um, but it's been really nice to reconnect with all of my old friends that, you know, I was because when I stopped shooting, I just kind of stopped everything i like was solely focused on new 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 stuff Mm -hmm. it's been it's been really fun can you tell us a little bit about what pushed you in that direction so you said that you kind of felt like you needed to change um maybe tell us a little bit more about that personal journey and as much as you're comfortable like what led you to that conclusion that you needed to make that big shift in your life because i feel like a lot of people feel that, um, that they need to make a big change in their life, but to have the courage to actually move forward and leave everything that you know behind and venture into something new and totally different and get out of your comfort zone is something that not everybody, um, is brave enough to do. So tell us a little bit about your journey in that regard. I mean, it was terrifying. Don't get me wrong. It's, I mean, I basically, when I stopped shooting, Cause I, it wasn't that I like hated my job or anything. It was def. I think I hated the fact that I wanted to be doing something different, but I felt stuck in, uh, in a routine that I was very comfortable in. And I knew that the only reason why I was unhappy was just because I needed to, you know, get out of that. But, um, it like just completely changed my, my way of thinking and doing taking myself out of my comfort zone like that was so, I can't even tell you how, how, how scary it it really was. You know, like I invested and did all that, but you know, with porn, it's not like mainstream work. There's, there's not really residuals. People can make money off of you forever, but you got that one paycheck and like, you know, you can have different, avenues but I wanted to do something completely different and there was like that it was it was definitely a choice of well if you want to do something completely different then you have to fucking balls to the wall do it you have to just kind of cut out everything you knew and go for it no matter what and that and I basically had to start from scratch again and start from square one you know with like yeah. So there was, so there was financial fear. Um, I'm hearing, right. I mean, well, there's always that with like, when you want to change your career, especially yeah. when you have to start from scratch, like music, you know, I was basically needing to find myself with music before I could even really, uh, make like a shit ton of money from it. Like I had to find my voice. I had to find my style, and to do that, I had to find myself because I have been skin diamond for so long. It got to a point where like, I felt the lines were kind of being blurred with like who I was and who skin diamond was, because even though I I've, I've prided myself on being a hundred percent authentic with my job and you know, I, I, you do get to a point in your career where you're kind of living up to this, like ideal that you've created for yourself and, and, you know, real life and your, your work life, it, it's, it, 
I don't know. I, uh, it's, it's been so amazing though. Like I've really, I feel like I was nervous at first about like, did I really make the right choices? Like, like leaving so abruptly. And, but I really feel like I needed to do that to really find like my personal kinks again. That was when I started getting back into my fetish roots and delving into dominatrix work and, um, and, and I found my mentor, Domina, um, Domina Angelina and kind of was welcome into this community of fucking powerful women and just ate it up. Like I, like that's been another, another thing that's been really amazing music and finding my, my lane and, and my Dom and, and, uh, my, my Dom work has been beautiful and very spiritually, very spiritually uplifting as well. So do you think that maybe shooting, cause you were obviously very successful when you were working in the industry and you were working a lot. And, um, I mean, I know we definitely loved shooting you. I mean, you're such a great model and such oh, a great I performer. love shooting with you. I miss Thank it. You. <laughs> I know. And my mom too, actually, I came across that yeah. old set that my mom shot of you by the pool. You were one of the you were at the tail end of, of her career. Like she was kind of, she was wrapping it all up when she was shooting you. So, um, but do you feel like, cause you, you talk about like how you got back in touch with your kinks again by actually leaving the adult industry, which is kind of interesting. Cause a lot of people say like, Oh, I came into the adult industry and I got in touch with my sexuality. Do you feel like maybe because you were obviously you're, whatever you're being booked to do is what you're doing. Right. And so you're, you know, at the behest of directors and what they want to shoot and stuff like that. So do you feel like maybe you didn't get an opportunity to really explore your own personal sexual preferences because you were busy fulfilling like other people's fantasies? Does that make sense? I, yes, I think when I first got into porn, yes, I've experienced so much more about myself sexually and it was fucking mm-hmm. amazing. And then because I, I've been a very enthusiastic, submissive in my life, when I started feeling like I wasn't so submissive anymore, that I think that was also a big thing uh, with me. Like I would do shoots where my limits were pushed intentionally um like i would tell someone don't do this specific thing and they would do it anyway like Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff really like switched something in my mind where i was like no i want to fucking be in control i'm gonna fuck you in the ass now you know what Mm -hmm. let's stomp on your balls now and so i (laughs) but i think i had to kind of take myself out of it completely to be able to realize that you know Mm -hmm. i I felt a little bit demeaned, it, it, not all the time. I'm not trying to say like porn was bad and oh my God, but I fucking yeah, love but, porn. Yeah, but, but I mean, are, we're going to kid ourselves if we're going to say every single experience and every single shoot was amazing and perfect and rainbows and unicorns. I mean, yeah, yeah like a job, you're going to have bad days and you're going to work with people that aren't ideal. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I think my cats are fighting outside. They were Sorry, fighting behind you. They were fighting behind you, which was really adorable. Oh, no, there's there's cat drama outside. I didn't oh, there's like real cat drama. There was like snarling. I was like, okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> never a dull moment. <laughs> I am the cat queen. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course, it's not going to be sunshine and rainbows every day. I would say that like, 97% of my time in porn was fucking amazing. And I loved every second of it. Um, but those few times were when I started to realize more about myself and how maybe I wasn't as submissive as I thought. And I definitely identify as a switch. I do love subspace. I love getting choked. I love that. Um, but, you know, I also want to be respected. And I felt like I had to kind of, now that it's been years and I've really had a lot of time to like think about everything, like I had to remove myself so that I could come back as the new, the new improved version of myself in my eyes anyway. I mean, my hair is better. 
<laughs> my, my body's looking good. Like I feel good. Like I was on set yesterday shooting for Riley uh, for Read My Lips, and she's like, "Oh, I love this. I I miss this. I miss just slinking around and being sexy and you know teasing the hell out of everybody." But you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been a journey. I, I like it though. So do you think that, um, so I want to hear a little bit more about, uh, your, your journey into doing dominatrix work. Cause that sounds like something that has been a really significant shift for you. Mm-hmm. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick commercial break to hear from our sponsors and we will be right back. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q and A's where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. All right. So we're back. So Raylan, you mentioned earlier about how you've delved into dominatrix work. You've been training as a dominatrix and how that's been uh, really important to you. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I've always been very much involved in the fetish world from like the, from when I was old enough to go to fetish clubs, I've always loved that world. That was what I kind of came up into before porn. So I always identified as submissive at that time. And, um, you know, even though I love and respected doms and, you know, I, I love the aesthetic and everything. I personally, didn't feel like I knew enough to be a dom or I don't know what it was. Maybe I just hadn't come into myself like I needed to, but, um, it's, it's been really beautiful to kind of like take the step back and come into it as a dom, because I, I've been learning so much more about, you know, the, the, the dance of, this the this dominant submission i'm a switch so i love being primal i love and i've always had a dominant personality in my in my real life you know like sexually i always felt more submissive but in real life i i definitely i'm very very headstrong and a, a little a little neurotic <laughs> at times <laughs> just in the sense of like i want what i want when I want it. And now sexually, I've been able to really hone that within myself. And, you know, with my partner, I, he's the the only person that I care to submit for at this time in my life. But, um, I'm just enjoying having slaves and, and playing with my, I have a little slave named Jelly Bean. So I enjoy playing there. And I don't know, it's, I, I, I'm one of those people that I just, I want to constantly experience new things. I get bored really fast. So I, this has been a really awesome experience. So for people who don't necessarily understand, uh, BDSM relationships, Mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what a playtime with your sub, I think you said jelly bean. 
Yeah. Right. Is like, can you tell us a little bit about that? Is that, um, cause you don't do like the, do you do like the lifestyle slave thing where they're a slave kind of outside of like a structured mm-hmm. playtime? Yes. Okay, great. So can you tell us a little bit more about that relationship? Well, with, um, with my personal slaves, I, I can consider myself a high protocol dominatrix. I, they need to come in the house. They will undress, put on their uniform, which is slave cuffs. They will always wear their collar in my presence. If not, it's, I do have some issues with one of my slaves who gets a little nervous about wearing his collar outside of um, closed, behind closed doors. But, you know, that's part of the fun. Mm. Encouraging people to let their guard down a little bit. And I love to bring that out of people. You know, a lot of, I find that the types of submissives that I attract are usually new to the scene. And I like to nurture this submission out of them in a very caring but strict fashion. Um, but yeah, Jelly Bean, he, he comes and he cleans my house. He washes my dishes. He runs errands. Um, basically whatever I tell him to do. Like the other day, I I was in a Christmassy mood. So I was like, I want hot chocolate and peppermints and, <laughs> and cedar, cedar branches. And so I made him go get them for me. And it's great. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lovely magical Christmas night. <laughs> but um, you know, he's also my my guinea pig for my OnlyFans. Um so we do like little slave shoots for people to watch as well. So if anybody is curious <laughs> mm-hmm. Now obviously all of that sounds great. Um I think to most people listening, they just think, wow, this just sounds kind of like a glorified, you know, servant, but what, um, what are like the more sexual play things that you do with jelly bean or does he just, um, run errands for you and clean your house? There's gotta be like more to that, right? Oh, of course. Uh, jelly bean. I, I'm so endeared to him. You know, he's, he's been with me for a long time and, I find with a lot of submissive men, a lot of the time they can't really talk to their friends or their loved ones about it. It can be a very lonely experience. It's, uh, not every fetishist is living out in the open. You know, some people can't because of their jobs or, you know, they have life circumstances that don't allow them to be as freely out in the open as someone like a professional fetishist would. I mean, for me, you know, my life is kind of an open book on the internet, but um, I find that I really do enjoy the nurturing aspects of, you know, being that confidant with a submissive and the um, agreed exchange, you know, I'm, I'm tapping into the things that get the biggest rise out of them and something that maybe they can't experience with anybody else. Um, and, and that's really, that's really, uh, heartwarming for me. Cause I do, I, I am, I am a, a nurturing dom. Like I, yes, I have a very sadistic side and I want what I want and I want it now, but you know, I, I feel like I'm more like a governess, you know, it's for your own good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've talked to, I've, I've interviewed a few, um, dominatrixes and they've all said the same thing that yes, you know, the role they play is, is somebody that, you know, kind of bosses the other person around to, to say the least, um, inflicts pain. If you're doing that kind of, you know, spanking or, um, you know, whatever kind of play involves that, but that it's always in a situation where the submissive has control of the situation. Like the submissive oh, always gets yes. to set the boundaries and you play within those boundaries. And, um, Aiden star, I think put it really well when she said, you know, yes, I like to, you know, beat men up and I like to make them, um, drink my piss and stuff like that. But I don't want to do that to somebody unless they really want it. Like I'm actually turned mm-hmm. off by the idea of 
punishing someone who doesn't want to be punished. And I, I think that's something that a lot of people who have no experience in the BDSM world don't understand. They see yeah. you know, submissives often as victims. So how um, could you explain to somebody who like really doesn't understand the dynamic, why submissives, um, you know, generally why they have in a really, in a good relationship, Dom submissive relationship, why they have the control and maybe how you set those boundaries mm -hmm. with them before you, you enact play. Well, um, you know, in any kind of a sense where I'm meeting, um, you know, a prospective slave or something like that, uh, they always come to me for one thing, I have them fill out a, a long questionnaire, do's and don'ts, describe your fantasies, that kind of stuff, you know, general get to know you in a kinky way kind of questions. Cause I mm -hmm. want to know, like, are, are you, are, do you want to be humiliated? Cause we can go there, but mm -hmm. I can also be a very sensual dom and, you know, play with, um, sensual, uh, uh, essential deprivation and latex fetishes where it's more sensual, but then, you know, I can also be a crazy, um, you know, mad scientist and you can be my, my mental patient. And that's fun too. <laughs> but I always have, um, like a uh, strict protocols that I always send slaves, you know, these are my do's and don'ts. What, you know, I want to make sure that everything is mutual and everything is consensually mutual you know it's mm -hmm. definitely not about just fucking with someone who doesn't deserve it i i'm an empath at the end of the day as well um mm -hmm. which is why it excites me when someone else is excited if you know i i i stuck needles in a guy's toenails and he was very very happy about it and that freaked me out. I just tried it. I was at a party. It was happening. And I was like, I've never done that before. And this is a willing subject. So, you know, but, um, you know, I would never just do that to someone. Right, right. <laughs> like, that's crazy. But, you know, if, if someone has a crazy fantasy, I'm also very open-minded. And I, I love making fantasies come true. My own you know, and if your fantasy fits in with my fantasy, then cool, let's go. Are um, there any other memorable um, situations that you found yourself in, like similar to that, like any other or any like crazy requests by submissives that maybe gave you pause for a moment or maybe that you refused to engage in at all? I mean, there's definitely fetishes that I personally would never do, but it's kind of fun to toy with the idea. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's some crazy fetishes out there. I mean, there's castration fetishes, which are like, you know, some, I would never do that to a person ever, but you know, it's fun to threaten someone with it. Mm -hmm. if it turns them on. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, I, I don't think there's been anything that I would like, well, no, there's definitely a lot of things that I would do. <laughs> there is, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot there, <laughs> yeah, there, I, and I get weird requests too. I've brought up, um, the poop man a couple of times. Oh no, I can't do that. Mm -mm. That's um, the guy who wants to eat my scat caviar, he hits me up every couple of years to see if I've changed my mind and, uh, I haven't so oh. far, but I have to say, um, my personal favorite fetish that I actually ended up shooting sort of for twisties once, but I, I don't know what it is about it. I just think it's so great is the pie in the face fetish. Oh, I just shot that. <laughs> <laughs> I shot a clown porn and we did a cream, a double cream pie. So there was a cream pie in the pussy and then a cream pie in the face. <laughs> Wait, okay. Can we talk a little bit more about the clown porn situation? Because there's this kind of running joke between me and Eva and other people who've listened to all, of, I haven't brought this up too many times, but like one of my f weird fetishes that I've never actually personally engaged in is like angry clown porn is like kind of hot to me. 
<laughs> because I think angry cr- clown porn. Yes, because I okay, so I am also. Well, I guess you're not so much that anymore, but I'm I'm very submissive in bed, right? So um, I always, you know, like to imagine like a really intense scenario. And so I always thought that it would be hot to like get dominated by a clown, but like an angry clown, like an it clown, you know, like someone who, like a creepy clown. Um, I've never done it, but Ooh, you should. I thought that would be kind of hot. So I don't suppose yours was an angry clown. It sounds like a... It was more like silly clown. It was more, more silly we're clown. just silly clowns that are being stupid. It was actually yeah. just, yeah, it was really, it was like <laughs> a home movie. <laughs> we want to be clowns. <laughs> but angry clowns is cool too. I can get on board with that. I, yeah. I, I, that's I, I creepy. Think, it's I think, disturbing. I like it. It's weird. Yeah, it is disturbing. <laughs> and it's weird. I think at, you know, this phase I've been in porn for so long that, you know, just imagining having sex with like a regular person doesn't really do it anymore Mm -hmm. for me. I've talked to so many other porn stars who now like can only like watch hentai porn to get off because yeah, you know, regular porn is like, it's too, and also too, like we know everybody in it, you know, it's like, I can't masturbate to people that I know because I know them on a personal level and it's just weird. Yeah. Uh, I feel the same. I, I feel the same. It's usually hentai or like weird kind of like obscure home movie kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, there's not enough angry clown porn out there. I feel, I feel like there should I'm be more like that. To, I'm going to make a mental note of this. With the pie in the face, but the like pie. eat that pie, you stupid bitch. Kind of like <laughs> kind of pie in the okay. face situation. Like grinding the pie in the face like you like a fucking pie in your face <laughs> eat it whore i'm on it i'm on it <laughs> i love it <laughs> there's definitely not enough clown porn like good no. clown porn no it's right yeah I, it's not i feel like it's a niche that hasn't been explored nearly well enough Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about your music career so hang on tight. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy online. Use my code Holly for 10 free gifts plus free shipping with any purchase. That's adameve.com. Use code Holly for 10 free gifts plus free shipping. All right, guys, we're back. So Raylan, let's talk a little bit about your music career. So you left the adult industry to pursue your passion for music. Can you tell us specifically what in the music genre you do? I believe you're an incredible singer. What is your style? All of that stuff. Well, that's really been the journey since I left porn. I mean, there was the domination journey, but there was also the journey of finding myself through music. So I love so many different genres of music and I sing so many different genres of music well, that it's been a challenge to try to pick a lane, so to speak, you know, figure out what I really fucking want to do. And it's kind of been all over the place that I haven't really shared with the world yet, but I do want to release some demos from uh, the past couple of years throughout this journey. You know, I'm getting ready to release uh, another music project that I've been working on. But in the meantime, you know, there are some really amazing songs that like, you know, that was part of who I was. And I think that the world deserves to see it. So yeah, I'm going to be releasing some demos on SoundCloud. But Yeah, I've definitely, I dipped my toe in the pop world and released a few singles to that kind of like pop rock kind of genre. Um, But the new genre is very different. It's definitely got a rock in there, but I I don't want to say more than that. It's a surprise. So for somebody who has zero musical talent, knows nothing about producing music. How do you go about producing a song? I was talking to, I had another guest on who was also delving into music. And she said that basically, you know, these days with technology and the internet, um, 
she would find a beat on some platform that's either selling beats or whatever. And then she would write lyrics to that beat or she would build on that beat. Is that how you do it? Or do you have different musicians that you collaborate with and you guys all write songs together? Like, how does that work? I, I usually collaborate with other song writers, um, producers, uh, musicians. I love uh, working with live musicians as well. Um, that was actually the plan for this year, you know, live shows was the, the main thing on the, the ballot there, but, uh, we all know what happened there, <laughs> but I, I usually work with, um, other people. Um, I, I like writing to beats, but it's not my favorite. Um, I prefer, I prefer live instruments, um, and, I also, you know, I, I like write, I love like dance music, you know, I'll write like some kind of floaty ethereal thing over something at any day. But for my personal project, I, my, I, my voice is suited more to like soulful live shit. Mm. And that's what the world will see eventually. <laughs> so, do you, so do you come together with these musicians and, and they start and work on a beat and then like you add lyrics to that as you go along or do you come with, with lyrics written out and you try to find a beat to fit that or is it like a little bit of both? Well, definitely both. Most of the time when I'm writing, if I, you know, something just pops in my head, I hear melodies all the time. Like melodies are my favorite thing uh, mm. to work with um, and harmonizing. So I... I, I sometimes I'll write like a whole song with a melody, but with just no music. And then I'll take it to one of my producer friends. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll work out and build something from scratch with live instruments or, um, sometimes they'll have like a song that's kind of already written, but it wasn't working for this other band that they were writing for. So then I'll try my hand at it and then announce my song. So, you know, it, it's kind of both, it's kind of both ways. And that's, right. But that's, I, I love writing music. That's definitely um, my favorite. I've been learning how to play the guitar um, and sing and play. Cause that's really, really helpful for writing music as well. Mm. Um, obviously. And yeah, just like really finding my feet with music has been its own fucking experience, you know, because it's definitely something that you have to do fully to do well. Um, mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah, it's it's been amazing, though. Like I've I've grown so much as a writer um, in, in the past like couple of years that I can't. So that's why I really can't wait to get some of these songs out because I'm dying over here. <laughs> want everyone to hear it now but you know how it goes the creative process is its own beast sometimes albums take five minutes to write sometimes they take a year or so I mean yeah that's how it goes there's yeah. there's no right or wrong way to do anything and I think that in recent years it's really been proven that like especially with the internet you can really pave your own lane you don't have to wait for for anybody else to tell you when to go you can just do it so mm. yeah so let's back up a little bit because this is a question that i that i ask almost everybody i have on the show and it's but it's also a question that my audience is always really interested in mm -hmm. um how did you get into the adult industry because you started off just as a fetish model at the beginning right mm -hmm. Yeah, I was um, I was working as a fetish glamour model for a few years before, um, and then I met, um, I had modeled for Burning Angel just photo sets uh, when I still lived in Scotland at the time, and uh, one day I got hit up from um, uh, Joanna. She wanted me to go to Paris and meet her there and film some girl girl scenes and. That was all I was going to do. I just was like, I've never done that before. Let's give that a go. And I want to go to Paris. So sure, fuck it. And so I went and ended up just having so much fun off camera as well as on that I was like, you know what, let's, 
let's just shoot some boy girl. And they, they said, do you want to shoot a boy girl in an anal scene? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Super well, kind. Well, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'll stay in Paris longer and have more sex and have more fun. That sounds great. Um, <laughs> and I honestly never thought I'd ever do it again. I was just kind of like in the moment, having the greatest time. Um, but you know, once I moved to LA, and I, I think I, I went to ABN for the first time, and that was the real moment where, like, I met everybody else in the industry, not just the Burning Angel crew, and. Um, you know, and I, I really kind of fell in love with the openness and, you know, and I, I said, I, I wonder if I could do that. I'm going to try it. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can get an agent. I'm going to see, I'm going to see where this goes. And I didn't really think I was going to be as successful as I was. I mean, obviously I wanted to, but you know, I was a, a more of an unusual look at the time. So, uh, I had my head shaved on one side, but now everybody has everything. So, you know, it's, but yeah, that was, that was my start. It was kind of like an accident, just like a lot of the best things in my life are accidents. <laughs> so coming back sort of into the adult industry, I know that you're shooting for your only fans, but I don't believe you're like shooting for any big studios right now. What are some of the biggest changes that you think you've seen in the adult industry in your time from when you started to now? Oh, it's crazy how much has changed. I mean, I love that now more girls have the platform to make their own money. Um, that's been the, I think the most positive, uh, change, like with things like premium Snapchats and, uh, it's, it's a little bit easier to like, uh, you know, have your own platform, like only fans. And, um, I think, uh, because of that, the girls have more control over their image. You know, you're not shooting for a company to be this, like, I mean, some girls are dressing up. I mean, obviously we all love to dress up, but I think that the styling of all of the dressing is more personable. Like girls are just wearing their hair however they want. Now you can have as many tattoos as you want. Um, I think that's great. It's it's made it more personable to the fans as well, like having all these social media platforms. Even though all the social media platforms hate us and want us to disappear, but people love us, you know. I mm. people love the porn industry. We're not going away. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> this is true. They have God. I've been in the industry for over twenty two years and I've seen you know, so many times that the government or special interest groups are trying to squash the porn industry. And it's just too many people watch porn. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As much as they don't want to admit it. Um, it's a powerful industry and it's yeah. not, I mean, it's like they, they, they tried to make, uh, alcohol illegal and look where that ended up. And now they're trying to push uh, legalizing marijuana at the federal level, I heard the other mm -hmm. day. Yep. Which is, I mean, who knows if it'll actually pass, but that's huge that they're pushing for it. I mean, times are definitely changing. And I do think that the world is becoming more open-minded because we're, you know, social media, a blessing and a curse as it is, it is really amazing for connecting people, making people realize that, you know, we have a lot of power as people to, to make sure that what we want to happen happens. And, you know, the, the younger generations, they're the most open-minded generation of our time. It's great. I love it. I love that. I love that the queer community, I love that like LGBT is like becoming such a force and yeah, it's really beautiful to see that also the change is happening in porn as well. I think that people are becoming, because there's a lot of outdated ideas in porn as well. Don't even get me started on the racial thing. I don't want to talk about it, but it's stupid. But, you know, there's that aspect of like outdated ideals that people are starting to like shift mm -hmm. and, you know, progress, progress is happening. I'm for it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely been more change in the last few years than there ever was before. So we're living in really interesting times right now. Yeah, yeah, it's 
the veil is lifting. It's crazy. It's been a fucking crazy year. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's been, I think in the long run, it's, it's, it'll be good. Yeah. I Famous agree. Last words. But yes, I'm optimistic. <laughs> Well, thank you, Raylan, so much for coming on. It was so good to see you and reconnect with you. Um, I know that I've had a lot of people requesting you for a long time, so people are going to be very excited. Oh, um, really? That's awesome. Oh, yeah, that you're coming, that you're going to be on um, my comeback episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered. <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find you online, plug all your websites, your OnlyFans, um, where can people go get more Raylan Joy, AKA Madam Skin Diamond? Well, you can find uh, me at dirtydiamondgirl.com. Um, and, you know, social media, my my name is usually Ray Joy Cat on Instagram. There you go. DirtyDiamondGirl.com. Great jacket. Fantastic. <laughs> and you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Go to Holly Randall Unfiltered to find out more about my podcast. And of course, to support this podcast, go to Patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered, where you will get all kinds of exclusive bonus content, including this uh, bonus Q&A that we are going to do right after this. So thank you guys so much for listening or watching whatever platform you're on. And I will see you next time. <laughs>